All right, finally, let's take a look at the concepts of voltage division and current division, which are a consequence of parallel and series combinations of resistors. And I really want to approach this with a perspective that's not always obvious when you look at a textbook, because when you look at a textbook, you will see all these equations that have to do with voltage and current division. But really, the two things you have to remember are this. Resistors in series divide a voltage. Resistors in parallel divide a current. Let me show a couple of simple circuit examples to illustrate these concepts. So let's begin first with a single simple loop circuit. So I've got Vs connected to R1 and R2, and they are in series. So in this case, because everything's in series, I know I'm going to have a single current flowing around that loop. So in this case, let's define a couple of voltages, V1 and V2, <coughs> across those two resistors, R1 and R2. And notice, I have to follow the pass to sign convention in terms of how I defined those voltage polarities. Okay, so given this, I'm going to apply Ohm's law. Ohm's law says that IS must be equal to VS divided by those two resistors added together, right? They're in series. Let's combine them. So that's R1 plus R2, my series resistance. Okay, but at the same time, I know that Vs, pardon me, I should say V1 is equal to Is times R1, and V2 is equal to Is times R2. So let's take this, let's substitute one of these up here. So in this case, what I get is that IS, substituting in for IS, what I get is that V2 is equal to VS over R1 plus R2 times R2 just substituting for that IS. Or, rewriting this, what I get is this is equal to R2 over R1 plus R2 times Vs. And that's for V2. What about V1? I can also show, once again by substituting in IS, that V1 is equal to R1 over R1 plus R2 times Vs. And note if we add R1 and R2 together, we just wind back up with Vs. If I combine those two equations together, I have the same thing. So here's the principle of voltage division. V1, the two resistors R1 and R2 divide the voltage between them. The input voltage is split into two pieces. That is voltage division. In a nutshell, very simple. Now, we note that Vs has to be, pardon me, V1 and V2 both have to be less than Vs because obviously the numerator is smaller than the denominator in both those equations. All right? Now, if I've got a loop of resistors, K resistors, connected together in series, I can do this with more than two resistors. So for a loop, in fact, let me redraw this. Let's say I've got this. Let's say I've got K resistors connected together in series. So this is R1, R2, R3 all the way to R sub K. 
So any arbitrary number of resistors connected together in series. And in this case, I had the same current I sub S flowing around. Then I can prove that for any voltage across here, so for any V1 or V2 or V3 all the way to V sub K, I can show that for any resistor, from 1 to k, that V sub n is equal to R sub n over the sum of all of the other resistors. So the sum from j equal 1 to k of R sub j and then multiplied times V sub s. So in any case, if I want to pick any voltage in that string, it is going to be equal to the resistance divided by the sum of all the rest of the resistors as shown in that equation here. All right, so this is voltage division for any arbitrary number of resistors. Now let's look at current division. So to make a current divider, I just have two resistors in parallel. So in this case, this is R1, this is R2. Since this is a single node pair circuit, I'm going to have the same voltage across all the elements. And then for the currents flowing through these resistors, I can write myself once again an Ohm's law equation, where in this case, Vs is equal to Is times the two resistors in parallel. So R1 in parallel with R2. Notice the symbol I just did, the double vertical strokes. That means in parallel with, R1 in parallel with R2. You'll see that all the time in every textbook. So you'll quickly get, get used to that when you see it. Which this is, means this is equal to IS times R1 R2 over R1 plus R2, product divided by sum. Of course, along the same lines, we also know that this must be true. I'll call this I1, I'll call this I2. I1 will be equal to Vs over R1. I can substitute Vs, and what I'll get, this is equal to Is times R1 over R2 over R1 times R1 plus R2, which will just be equal to R2 over R1 plus R2 times Is. So that's I1. I2, I can show, will be equal to Vs over R2, which will be equal to R1 over R1 plus R2 times Is. And so here we see the principle of current division where the input current Is is split into I1 and I2, each of which is less than Is. And obviously if I combine those two equations together, I will simply get that I1 plus I2 is equal to Is. So here are the equations, and of course I can once again have N, uh, I, should, I should say K resistors in parallel. And so let's say I've got this circuit. Where I've got an arbitrary number of resistors in parallel, any number I want. So in this case, I've got R1 with I1, R2 with I2, 
R3 with I3 all the way to RK and I sub K. And in this case, I've got the same voltage VS across all of those resistors and I can show for any resistor M from 1 to K the following equation holds that I sub M will be equal to 1 over R sub M divided by the sum of J equal 1 to K of 1 over R sub J all multiplied times I sub S. Okay, now I've gone through and done a lot of formulas for you here. And one of the big mistakes students will make when they see voltage division and current division is think, oh man, I've got to remember, I've got to memorize those equations. No, you don't. What you want to remember about current division and voltage division and what we call current dividers, which are just resistors in series, and voltage dividers, which are resistors in parallel, is the principle. Because once you guys learn nodal and mesh analysis, these formulas become irrelevant. If I ask you to calculate any of the currents in this circuit, you can just apply the analysis techniques you're going to be learning and just get the answer. So current division and voltage division are concepts. They're the way things behave. That's how you should think of them. You should not think of these as equations you have to memorize. If I ask you for a voltage or a current in a circuit, you're going to learn how to solve it no matter what. And current division and voltage division won't even factor into it. Now, if you do circuit analysis long enough, over time you will learn the voltage and current division equations because they become a quick little shorthand to apply. But in terms of where you are right now, just learning this stuff, it's not something you should think you have to memorize. Just focus on the material we're going to cover next, which is going to be nodal analysis and mesh analysis. Learn those techniques, and you can actually go through and derive these equations very quickly yourself using those techniques. No memorization needed. Okay, so that kind of finishes up all of our fundamental material where we're looking at how to do brute force analysis and how to combine elements together. Next time we're going to start looking at what is really kind of the, the true core of this course, where we're going to look at the techniques that are completely fundamental to everything you're going to be doing for the rest of this class, and that is nodal analysis and mesh analysis. We'll start on that next time.